far out at sea, where the water is as blue as the loveliest cornflower, and as clear as the finest crystal, far deeper than any anchor can fathom. Here the sailors tell tales of mermaids who live in wondrous kingdoms beneath the waves. And though it is said that mermaids have no immortal soul, all agree that they possess the most heavenly voices, voices more beautiful than those of any human being. And when storms threaten to wreck the sailor ships, the mermaids would sing their most seductive songs, entreating those on board to come down to them. getting you off our hands. <laughs> Let us fix your hair. Ow, but it hurts. Stop fussing. One must suffer for beauty. <laughs> there now. Off you go. Goodbye. Today, on her 15th birthday, the Little Mermaid was finally permitted to rise above the water surface. Oh, she'll get bored with the world above. Perhaps not. She's different. live beneath the waves. No! No, he must not die! No! I will not let him drown! He could hardly be more than 16. <laughs> How beautiful he is. So still and cold. Just like the marble statue that stands in my garden. Oh, if I could only stay up here with him and walk beneath the sun. But alas, that could never be. Passing cloud, a puff of smoke, your human life is brief. While sea maidens live three hundred years, then melt to foam upon the reef. At the end of life, your soul lives on, but mine is never more. Till the end of time, in paradise, I live foam upon the shore. A dream that cannot be My home is water Yours is land You can't live below With me I believe this man is a prince. Prince? Your Majesty? the raging way. 
graves and cradled him in my arms, he doesn't know that it was I who saved his life. The little mermaid returned to her deep ocean home. So lovesick was she for the prince that she wanted to weep. But alas, mermaids have no tears. First day above the waves. Yes. What? Nothing? You, you saw, saw nothing? nothing? Did you lie on the moonlit rocks and gaze upon the towns on shore? Did you? Did you? And what about the fishes that fly above the surface? Fish. And the liquid golden sunset? Did you see it? Did you? Nothing. No. What did you see? I saw nothing. Nothing. What did you see? What did you see? Except. And what about the lovely little human children? children? I hear they can swim, though they have no tails. Did you at least see the icebergs that are smooth as pearls and sparkle like diamonds? Did you? I swear I saw nothing. Except for him. Oh, now we must be sailing up above. I would gladly give up 300 years of my life if I could spend but a single day by his side. Tell us who? He, whom I love more than anything else. Tell us who? Tell us who? I would risk everything to win him and gain my immortal soul. Where are you going? Where? Where? I shall go to the old sea witch. Where? I've always been so frightened of her, but maybe she can help me. <laughs> Hello to you, Madam Sea Witch. Ah, the one who saw nothing up above except for him. <laughs> but how could you know? What? That? Why, that's nothing. Behold! <gasps> you wish to win the prince's love and to walk above the waves like a human. I do. A dangerous wish, my dear. But fear not, you shall have your way. I am going to brew a potion for you. And if you drink it down, your beautiful mermaid tail will split into a pair of those dreadful stumps that humans call pretty legs. And all will say you are the loveliest maiden on the earth. For you will keep your sublime gliding motion. Why, you will move more gracefully than the finest dancer. How does that sound, child? If all this is what you truly desire, you need only drink the potion. <laughs> but remember, once you take on a human shape, you will never be able to become a mermaid again. You will be banished from the Ocean Kingdom for the rest of your life. Agreed. And should your prince find someone else to marry, ooh, then at dawn your heart will break in two and you will turn into nothing more than sea foam. Agreed. You should also know that my services don't come cheap. My price is very high. I'll accept only the best you have. Now what would you have for a powerful witch like me? Except, perhaps, your lovely voice. My voice? My voice? But if you take my voice, what will I use to charm the prince? Your exquisite form, your graceful motion. These should be enough to beguile any human heart. Well, have you lost your courage? No. So be it. Tooth of shark and eye of eel. Soon this vision will be real. Oh, sorry. But did I forget to tell you that every step you take on your new legs will be as painful as if you were walking on razor-sharp blades? And will you endure all this suffering in silence? Yes. Yes. I'll agree to everything. No. 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 So be it. Now go. You little fool, go to your prince. <laughs> Upon the next sunrise, the little mermaid found herself in a royal garden where she glided along on the loveliest pair of legs any young girl could desire. Ah, such a beautiful young maiden. Why do you look so familiar to me? 
those kind blue eyes so full of sadness. Yes, now I remember everything. You're so like her. A young maiden I saw but once. I was at the helm when my ship was wrecked in a storm. Somehow the waves carried me ashore near a convent where a group of young girls were saying prayers. And the youngest of all saved my life. She is the only maiden in the world that I could ever truly love. And yet, you seem so much like her. You could almost replace her in my heart. Heaven must have sent you to console me. Alas, now he will never know that it was I who saved his life. For I have given away my voice in order to be with him. The prince took the silent maiden by the hand, and she became his most cherished companion. The prince called her his little foundling, and took her on all his royal journeys. Day by day she grew dearer and dearer to the prince, and oh, how he adored her and protected her and though he loved her as one loves a child. The devoted little mermaid hoped against hope that one day he might grow to love her as his wife and share with her his immortal soul. But alas, from my father. It seems that he wants me to sail to a nearby land to meet a king and a princess. It's only because my parents insist upon it. I could never marry her. She could never be as much like the maiden who saved me as you are. I would much prefer to marry you, my silent little foundling. I hope the sea is not frightening you, my little one. You needn't have any worries, for I know all about the strange creatures lurking below. The next morning, the ship sailed into the harbor of the neighboring kingdom. The whole port was abuzz with excitement over the arrival of the prince, and the little mermaid waited anxiously to see if the princess was more beautiful than she. Present my daughter, the princess. Welcome, my prince. Oh, it is you. You who saved me when I lay lifeless on the shore. At last, it is you. Dearest wish has been granted. Rejoice with me, my foundling, for you are more devoted to me than anyone else. The little mermaid heard not one note of the wedding march. And should your prince marry another, mm, then at dawn you will turn into sea. sea. Oh, oh, oh. She has
has never spoken a word. But she is like a sister to me. A very dear sister. The little mermaid knew that this was the last evening she would ever see her beloved prince for whom she sacrificed so much. This was the last night she breathed the same air as he. An eternal night awaited her, without thought nor dream, for such is the fate of one without a soul and no hope of winning Sister! one. gave the sea witch everything we own, all of our crown jewels, and our beautiful braids. We gave up everything, everything we had, to save you. You must take this. The sea witch sent it to you. A storm is hidden in there. A storm that will sink this ship. The prince and the princess will drown. It is the only way that you can become a mermaid again and live out your 300 years. But hurry! Hurry! Either they have to die or you do. There is no other way. Hurry, sister. Open the shell or die. The sun will rise soon and you will be nothing but foam on the ocean. Hurry! She thought of her prince and how deeply in love he was with his dear wife, the princess. And so the little mermaid let the storm shell drop harmlessly into the sea. As the sun slowly rose like a herald of death, the little mermaid flung herself into the sea, her body slowly dissolving into the foamy waves. lifted higher above the sea, she found that death had not touched her after all, but rather she felt herself floating up, oh so transparently, into the air. of the world. And after 300 years of kind deeds, you will gain your immortal soul. And so, for the very first time, the grateful mermaid felt tears in her eyes. She hovered unseen over the ship's deck and gazed down upon the prince and princess who had been searching for her in vain. She kissed them each upon the forehead and then soared into the sky to join the other daughters of the air as they flew toward the snowy white clouds floating through the heavens.